Hi, I'm Mrs. Murdoch, and in this video, I'm going to talk about once you have created a graph that already has error bars on it, or if you're presented with a graph that has error bars on it, how you can analyze that graph, what, what those error bars mean, and how to interpret them, and how to write a valid claim evidence reasoning that correctly reflects what's going on with your graph. So in this, in this graph, it's, um, it's the effect of fertilizer on plant growth. Uh, the sample size was nine, and there are two SEMs used, and that means that, that the standard error that was calculated was multiplied by two, and then was used in each case was added two values of the SEM were added, added to the top, added to the average of 20, and then two values were also added going down from 20 to create this error bar. Same here. Two values of the SEM were added to the average to make the error bar go up, and then two, two were going to go down. Now an error bar, what an error bar really does um, is it gives you a visual of the spread of your data for each, for each treatment that you've got. So if you had nine plants that were measured after they were given water, there, that was a control. And um, what the average is this line here. The average that you calculated of those nine plants and how much they grew was around 20 millimeters, right? Just like the average for those that were treated, the nine plants that were treated with fertilizer up here was around 24. So if you didn't have the error bars, you could simply say, well, I mean, it definitely looks like the fertilized plants grew more by you know, by four millimeters than the watered plants did. Right now, it looks like there might be a valid difference there. What you're gonna do is you're gonna add the information that the error bars give you to be even more confident about your conclusion. So many of you remember that on the um, Mr. Anderson video, he shows you a standard de deviation curve that looks something like this. And this value here represents your mean right? And then going this way and this way are the standard, the standard error values, right? The distribution of the other points of the data where the, the mean is here and then there were also other points that were measured. Um, there were some plants that didn't grow as tall and then there were plants that grew a little bit taller than the average, right? Just like in your error bar here, what you're really looking at is you're looking at this curve here turned on its side. So it's kind of like, it's kind of like, oops, where's my eraser? If I just took this out of here for just a minute. Oops, lost my error bar, put it back. It's kind of like this error bar represents that graph kind of put on its side like that. So this is related to your error bar. Both of them have a distribution where some of the plants were measured and they were, they were, shorter. They, did, they didn't grow as much as the 20 average, and some grew a tiny bit taller. There was variation in the data, right? There was variation around that mean of 20. Same here. There were some plants that grew a little taller than 24 and some that grew a little shorter than 24, and there's your variation. There's your spread of the data. So generally, what you want is for your SEM or your standard error to be small. The smaller your error bars, the tighter your data is around the mean. You know, the less it varied from the mean, um, the more certain maybe you can be that the true value of that plant growth really is close to that mean. Um, the, uh, so you want your standard error to be small, and you want your sample size, on the other hand, the bigger your sample size is, the more reliable your data is because you have a representative sample. And I would say that maybe nine plants is not much of a representative sample. You probably need a few more uh, to be a little bit more certain of your data. But this is just a simple experiment, so we'll go with that. Okay, so you have these error bars here and you have this data here and you are asked to write a conclusion. So let's, let's start doing that for a moment. So the first part of the conclusions, a lot of the times that what we'll ask you to do uh, is write a claim. And you may recall writing claim evidence reasoning uh, sections from, 
from previous classes that you've taken. So the claim is just a simple sentence that looks at the data presented and makes a conclusion. Did the fertilizer have a significant effect on the plant growth? I'm going to say that yes, it did in this case. Given what I've got here, given the sizes of the error bars, I'm going to say the fertilizer had had a significant effect on the growth of these plants. The fertilizer increased growth. That's a valid conclusion claim given what we've got in the picture. Now, we have to go a little bit further than that, and now we, know, we go to the evidence. The evidence is where we use, um, we use quantitative data as much as possible from the graph and information that the error bars give us to, to, ex to support what we just claimed. So let me go over here for a minute here, pull the screen down a bit. Okay, so what I would say here is that you can just talk about the averages of the fertilizer being higher than the water. That's valid. So you can say, first of all, um, the mean of the fertilizer plants is four millimeters higher than the mean of the control plants. That's valid. That's a start. And it is quantitative. That's fine. But now we want to really talk about those error bars. So the way that you talk about the error bars is in terms of visually. If you look at the topmost uh, error bar of the water and the bottommost error bar of the fertilizer treatment, you'll see that they do not overlap. That the lowest, uh, the, the, the plant that grew the least with the fertilizer is still higher than the plant that grew the most with just water. That lack of overlap is what tells us that the fertilizer average truly is significantly higher than the water average. So, we say that the error bars of the two treatments do not overlap, which allows us over here, allows us to be 95% confident, right? Because we use two values of the SEM. That incorporates a lot of that spread of the data, a lot of it. A lot of the, the different measurements that we made of those plants is incorporated in those two SEMs. Um, that the fertilizer mean Bit. is significantly, significantly higher than the control mean. So do not overlap, right? When the error bars do not overlap, we can be more confident that one bar really is truly higher or lower than the other one, and that the, um, the data is significant, and you can make a conclusion about it being different. Okay. Now, the, the final part, I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but the final part is reasoning. 
And reasoning is where you go into the why, right? Why um, did the fertilizer make the plants grow more? And I'm not going to go into that really um, deeply, but this is where you would pull your scientific knowledge and understanding of this phenomena out. You might have to do a little research. You might have to go into your notes. You might have to go into the book and explain, okay, why is this higher than that? Um, in this case, uh, fertilizer has nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus, which you now know because of your biochemistry knowledge, um, uh, help in the making of phospholipids for cell membranes, and nitrogen helps in the making of proteins and, uh, and nucleic acids, which are all very important for building more cells, which allows more growth. Okay, now let's go back up and change, up, change it up a little bit. What if instead of looking like that, the error bars instead were very different? What if instead the error bars looked like this? And you had a very large variation in the data, like that. Now this changes everything. Now you would have to change your claim because there's a tremendous amount of, er of variation in the data causing lots of overlap. You had measurements of the water plants that look like they're ju growing just as well as the ones with the fertilizer over here. Okay, so now you have the fertilizer did not have, uh-huh, does not <laughs> have a significant effect on the growth, and you would take that out completely because it doesn't look anymore like there's a significant difference here evidence, the mean of the fertilizer plants, I mean, that doesn't change. The mean itself hasn't changed. It is still higher, but you would say, however, right, the error bars of the two treatments do overlap, which allows us, which no longer allows us, which prevents us to be 95% that the fertilizer is significantly higher. And why, going into reasoning, why was there no effect of the fertilizer on this? And I would say, just in passing, just so you have an explanation, um, probably it's because the soil used to grow the plants already had plenty of nitrogen and phosphorus in it, preventing any real difference between the plants if you add extra nitrogen and phosphorus, which are often limiting factors to plant growth. But if you had soil in, in the case of this experiment that already had it in there, you might not see much of an effect, just as an explanation. So that is how you interpret error bars. And that is some of the language that you can use to do that. So I hope that that was helpful.